Well, good morning. It is chillier and windier than I thought it was going to be out here. But praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It is February uh, 18th, 2023. Uh, here we go. This year is just going so fast. I know they say the older you get, the faster it seems like it's going, but I'm talking to a lot of young people that seem to be saying the same thing. Just, it's going quick. It is a time to, to get right with the Lord, to, to make sure that you understand how much He loves you. This world uses the word love um, so casually. You know, we love this, we love that. Oh, I love you, everybody. And I mean, I catch myself sending little hearts. But you know, the love of God is so much deeper. True love does not look for loving somebody so that you can get love back. It's loving somebody just because you love them. No matter what they do, you love them. And that kind of love is impossible in the natural. It's only when you have the love of God inside of you and it overflows and it reaches to other. It helps you love those that it, in a normal situation would be impossible to love because you're not doing it in your own power or in your own strength. You're doing it in the love of God. When you understand how much He loves you, how precious you are to Him, Yes, He sees the whole world and He loves the whole world. But He loves you. You as an individual. Nobody else has your fingerprints. Nobody else has your DNA. The, the, the retina in your eye, I guess, is very particular. Nobody else has it. God chose you to be born. God chose you to be hearing this right now. So that you know that He loves you. It is worth whatever battles you may go through in this life to keep that relationship with the God Almighty that created heaven and earth, knowing that He dearly loves you. The scriptures this morning are going to have to do with the love of God for us. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, as we get into your word, I ask that your Holy Spirit reveal to us how much you truly care and love us, Lord. In Jesus' name I ask this. Amen. You've tuned in to Matt and Randy in the morning. We are here to encourage you in the Word so that you can be strong in the faith and live victoriously in Christ. That is where true victory is found. He is the King of kings and Lord of lords. There's no one higher than Him. And He dearly, dearly loves you and cares for you. Ephesians 1, 3 is going to be my first scripture. Starting in verse 3. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, just as He chose us in Him before the foundations of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to Himself, according to the good pleasure of His will get that according to the good pleasure of his will God takes pleasure in having you be one of his children you know he promised this all the way back in Genesis when Adam and Eve messed up he didn't say oh that's it I'm wiping this creation I was gonna do out no he did not he made a promise that one day he was gonna make things right it says, who predestined us to adoptions as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace. Oh, the grace of God. By which he made us accepted in the beloved. John 3, 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. There was a time in Israel that the people, the children of Israel had sinned. Um, and God had told Moses to make a brazen snake and to lift it up on a stick because it was a, a curse. They were, they were dying. <laughs> they were, there was a plague that was killing them. And God told Moses, make this. And then lift it up 
and those who look up at this serpent will be healed see they had to by faith believe that when they looked at that they were going to be healed that God was truly going to do what he said he was going to do well we look at Jesus it says for God's so, I'm sorry as was well lifted up the he lifted up that whoever believes in him, excuse, let me read it again. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. That's Jesus on the cross. That whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe in him is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil they get that word practicing. That means someone who is constantly doing evil. Constantly sinning. You know, knowing that it's wrong, they still continue to do it. Everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light. You know, people that do evil, they, they try to keep it hid. They do things in darkness so that they can't be seen. It says, love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest their deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be clearly seen, that they have been done in God. You know, when Adam and Eve sinned, they, what did they do? They tried to hide. You know, when people do wrong, they try to hide. They try to hide their sin. They do these things in secret thinking, oh, nobody's going to know. Nobody's going to see. But God does. But God is merciful and full of grace. We may mess up, but God's grace is bigger than any mess up we might do. He dearly loves us. It's in our heart, we say, Lord, I am sorry. I messed up, Lord. You got to know that you know that you know in your heart that God's love is bigger than any sin you may have done. He dearly loves you. He is full of mercy and grace toward you, toward me. In our mess ups, we just have to call up to him and know that he loves us and cares and will forgive us. He's not gonna poof you away. He's there to hold your hand and pull you up. You know, I think of in movies sometimes you see scenes where somebody is you know fighting and they're on the edge and they slip off the edge and all of a sudden one of their friends or somebody in their team comes and just grabs their hand and pulls them back up you see you may feel like you're battling the enemy and you're getting ready to fall off the cliff and you feel like okay this is it because you're just hanging on and then all of a sudden the prayers of a brother and sister in Christ grab you and pull you back up just like Jesus pulled Peter back up. You see, our prayers are important. When we pray for one another, we, we might not see what's happening, but we know that something is happening. God does work through our prayers. Our hearts, our love for one another. It is so, so important. John, 1 John 3 says, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called the children of God. Therefore, the world does not know, does not know us because it did not know Him. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be, but we know that when He is revealed, we shall be like Him. One day he's coming back as Lord of Lords and King of Kings. It is going to be, <laughs> there's going to be no doubting of who Jesus is when he comes back. For we shall see him as he is. 
and everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. When you have that hope of Christ, you know he's coming back. You know he's got you. It causes you to live your life in a different way because you're no longer living just to satisfy this flesh or to please people. You're living your life to please the Lord, the one who loves you more than anyone else. The Spirit of God empowers you in a way that you didn't think was possible. Things that you loved, you now will find yourself hating, not liking. You will enjoy being in the presence of God more than anywhere else. The greatest vacation spot in the world could not compare to when you're in those moments in the presence of God and the Spirit of God overflows over you and His love just, oh, pours on you. Nothing in this world can compare to that feeling. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I ask you to just call out to God. Dear, dear Heavenly Father, reveal to me your love. Let me understand what Jesus did for me on Calvary. The love that you have for me. Holy Spirit, have your way. Forgive me, O oh Lord, for the things that I've done wrong and help me to walk my life in a way that is pleasing to you. And you know what? God will answer that prayer. It doesn't matter how many times you may fall down. As I said before, you may walk toward the Lord three steps and fall backwards two steps, but you're still one step ahead toward the Lord. Keep your eyes focused on Him. It doesn't matter how many times you may fall. Stay focused on how much God loves you how much he cares for you. I had more things to read, but let me encourage you, pick up Psalms 30 today. Read Psalms 30, make it a prayer in your heart, a song of praise to the Lord. We will see you tomorrow morning, it's Sunday, it'll be at church, 10.30 in the morning we do worship, 11 o'clock is the, the preaching part, and that's what we do the live stream of, is 11 o'clock. If you can come in person, we would love to have you. It's just Intercession City Church of God is all you have to look up. Intercession City Church of God. On Sundays, the traffic is not bad. I know during the week it can be bad to go to Intercession City um, from different areas. But on, on Sundays, it's not a bad traffic. So come and join us where it's a casual atmosphere. But we do not compromise the Word of God. You will hear the Word of God. You will be able to fellowship with a small group of believers that are just hungry for God. Our desire is to just love on the Lord and have His love pour on us as we love one another. So keep a praise song in your heart. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Have a great day.